welcome back. We talked about erosional landforms in the desert, those that are created by material being weathered and eroded away, taken away, what's left behind is a landform. Now we take that material that's been weathered and eroded, that sediment, deposit it somewhere, that sediment creates different types of landforms. So let's talk about some of those. Um, again, looking at that same picture, we can talk about material being deposited such as alluvial fans, playa lakes, uh, talus slopes, uh, a number of different places where sediment will pile up. Um, so again, this is formed by the deposition of sediment. So we're not where it's being taken away, but where it's being deposited. Alluvial fans, bajadas, playas, not playas, playas, sand dunes, uh, and talus slopes, just to name a few. And these are some common ones we'll see around Arizona as well. So alluvial fans are these kind of fan-shaped piles of sediment that form where kind of a rapidly flowing mountain stream enters a relatively flat valley. We discussed this a little bit back in, I think, Unit 7. We're talking about sediments and sedimentary rocks. So whether it's a, uh, so these are typically um, uh, only uh, streams that are, are only occur from, you know, rain rain uh, rain fueled uh, streams they're not always kind of permanent streams so you get water up in the mountains as the stream comes out of the mountains it has sediment in it as it hits the flat valley floor uh, that water spreads out slows down deposits sediment that type of sediment deposited by flowing water is called alluvium therefore alluvial fans that stream as that alluvial fan builds up that stream kind of as you know as it intermittently rains and that water comes out of the mountains it kind of moves around a little bit uh kind of growing that that fan shape bigger and bigger and bigger the deposition the sediment deposition is due to water so again you get some sort of uh you know stream coming out of the mountains um typically straight stream channels uh, when it hits that valley floor uh it's the water slows down deposit the sediment creating these alluvial fans uh, here's an example of a uh, you know, straight stream channel coming out of this kind of mountainy area. I believe this is in Death Valley, and this fan-shaped uh, deposition is called an alluvial fan because it's built from a type of sediment deposited by, by a stream called alluvium. You can see another alluvial fan right over here. Now, a bajada is, it uses alluvial fans, but a bajada is a, an area of overlapping <laughs> alluvial fans. A bajada, you know, there's so many streams coming out of the mountains that they're all creating these alluvial fans when they hit the valley floor and they all start to overlap. So they create this kind of overlapped area as you get to the mountain range. So they've got this big area of sediment and you can kind of see the overlapping uh, alluvial fans, but it kind of partially buries that front range of the, of the mountains. Uh, and the sediment here is deposited due to water. So this is a satellite image again of Death Valley. This is the, the flat valley floor, but and here's the mountainous area, and you can see all of these streams that would, uh, these dry streams, these arroyos, these washes that intermittently fill with uh, rainwater and sometimes snow melt because the mountains around Death Valley can be very high. In any case, that water deposits these uh, sediment, and you, there are all these alluvial fans, but they're all overlapping. So this whole area of overlapping alluvial fans is called a bajada. The single one, alluvial fan, big area where they all overlap, called a bajada. Um, so the flat valley floor here, um, and sometimes what a flat valley floor is, and due to certain depositional environments, is known as a playa. Not playa, playa. Uh, a playa forms typically due to some sort of shallow, short-lived lakes that form when the water drains into a relatively flat area and there's no outlet for that water to go. You know, typically in a drainage basin, <clears throat> water falls in an area, it eventually connects to some river or stream or, you know, some sort of stream, river system, and eventually flows into the ocean. Here in Arizona, we live in the Colorado River Basin. However, there are some small areas, you know, that just don't drain anywhere and can pool up this this water as it flows out of the mountains into an area. So, you know, maybe a big thunderstorm occurs, the streams flow off the um, mountains, create kind of a shallow area of water, and that, that water kind of uh, evaporates away. 
but it leaves behind that sediment. And when that sediment is left behind, it kind of forms this very flat, what are known as playas. Very common in arid desert regions. And playas are some of the flattest landforms in the world. So flat that there's often races on playas um, because they're just so flat. There's no kind of bumps to them. They're just so flat that they're, they're just almost perfectly flat as far as you can see. Sediment uh, deposited here due to water. So here's an example of a playa here. Again, streams that would flow off here. Um, these are probably alluvial fans, right? Overlapping, creating a bajada, but that water, um, if it pools up here, will create kind of a shallow little lake. If the water evaporates, it leaves behind the sediment, creating this kind of flat playa. Sand dunes. Some of you may be familiar with these sand dunes. If you've ever driven from, from Phoenix to San Diego, as you're getting towards the border of California, there are some areas of sand dunes there, uh, as well as many other places around the world. But um, that's the closest area of sand, uh, sand dunes that I can think of. Um, I forget the name of it offhand, the name of that area. Any case, um, so sand dunes are just hills of loose sand built by Aeolian processes, wind processes. I mean, that's one of those depositional environments we talked about back in, in Unit 7. Um, they occur in some deserts, uh, typically uh, inland or along some coasts, in some deserts. And the reason I, I'm stressing in some desert is because when you see a movie, right, and they're in a desert, it's usually sand dunes, hot sand dunes. Sand dunes aren't in every desert. We're in a desert here in the Phoenix area. Can you point out any sand dunes around here? Think about it. No. There's, there's no sand dunes around here. Wait, I'm in a desert. There's no sand. That's because sand dunes only occur in some dry, arid regions. Not all. In fact, most deserts don't have sand dunes. I use Arizona as an example. So, you know, sometimes the movies get it wrong. Not all deserts have sand dunes. Some do, of course. Some have very large, extensive areas of sand dunes, but most actually don't. There's actually different types of sand dunes, and it's really tied to wind patterns, weather patterns, vegetation patterns. I'll outline a, uh, some of those in just a second. You don't, you don't have to rem remember, remember them at all, but just to, to illustrate what they are. Uh, sediment deposited here due to wind. These are an Aeolian process, so Aeolian windy areas. Um, so this is some sort of sediment source nearby, typically near some sort of mountain range, small or large, uh, or even Playa Lake as wind blows over these, it piles up the sediment in certain locations. The different types of sand dunes uh, that you that can occur are uh, Barkan dunes, linear dunes, transverse dunes, parabolic dunes, and star dunes. All of these purple uh, arrows indicate wind direction, so um, kind of these U-shaped uh, Barkan dunes in the wind direction, linear dunes due to kind of wind in, moving in different directions, different times of the day or year, creating these long strips. Transverse dunes are perpendicular to the wind. Parabolic dunes are uh, kind of the opposite of a Barkan dune, and a lot of it is tied to vegetation. Star dunes in areas where the wind is just pretty irregular throughout the year, different directions, create these what are known as star dunes. We see actually sand dunes on other planets as well, kind of cool. So uh, weathering and erosion, Aeolian processes. Um, so here's just some images of some sand dunes, some uh, Barkan dunes. Uh, these are most likely maybe star dunes. You can see the size of them as compared to um, this little truck here, but if you look not too far off, there's you know no sand dunes over here. Sometimes areas of sand dunes might just be a small little part of a desert, whereas um, in some cases, like the Sahara Desert, it's a very large part of the desert. Or, again, remember, most deserts don't have sand dunes. They don't. And then finally, another pile of sediment uh, depositional feature is called a talus slope. Uh, it's a pile of rocks that accumulate at the base of a cliff, shoot, slope. Uh, typically, you can find these you know, at the bases of, ba uh, of uh, buttes, mesas, plateaus. Um, uh, the, the sediment builds up. It's a slow accumulation through periodic rock fall from the adjacent cliff faces. Uh, often, you get a fan shape with a very steep angle. But in this case, what caused the sediment to deposit is gravity. 
gravity kind of pulled that material down as weathering and erosion occurs gravity eventually pulls it down and you get this big buildup of loose sediment at the base of structures and that that loose uh, sediment buildup is called a talus slope so you can see here this kind of rubble buildup is a talus slope so it's very steep you know loose material very hard to climb very loose very steep and it's not it's not fun to try and climb up a talus slope uh, here's another one back here and back there and here's another one over here so again they they kind of accumulate at the at the base of of features and you can see they don't extend very far out my friends that brings us to the end it's so sad so what are some of the big or main ideas as it pertains to deserts north american monsoon um, I feel I went on enough of a tangent to, to make it somewhat important. Um, remember, monsoon is the season. Rain is just called rain, so call it rain. Remember, if you're in some place cold and it's the winter season, you don't go out when it's snowing. You, you don't go, oh, look, it's winter. It's wintering outside. No, it's snow. Winter is the season. Snow is the event. Monsoon is kind of the, the, the seasonal change of wind patterns. Rain is the event. Rain is rain. A storm is a storm. Five different types of deserts. Uh, remember those. Uh, we'll go over that in lab as well. Um, desert erosional landforms, different types. Depositional landforms, the types as well. Um, a lot of that we'll go over in lab as well, kind of identifying some of those. Uh, well, my friends, it has been it's been my honor. It has been uh, my pleasure. Um, all I can say is that. Um, yeah, you know, geology is, is telling the story of Earth, and that story, once you know how to read the book of Earth, and you can kind of start to tell that story, that to me is the, is the beauty of geology, um, you know, read, reading the story of Earth. It's a story, it's a, it's a horror movie, it's an action movie, it's a love story, it's whatever you want it to be, it is. Um, if you... If you dig geology, if you, dig, if, you, if you dig or if you like geology and you want to take more classes, we offer a number of different ones here at Australia Mountain Community College. Um, geology 102, historical geology, looks into things like fossils and plate tectonics and how mountain ranges were built and where the continents were in geologic past and putting together that puzzle, dinosaurs, all that kind of fun stuff. Geology 105, which we are looking to offer, um, is planetary geology, so looking at Earth geology and comparing that to the different planets in our solar system, kind of fun. Uh, and then Geology 110, uh, environmental uh, natural disaster, environmental geology and natural disasters. So focusing on the nasty stuff that Earth throws at us and how that impacts humanity and how humanity, I guess, impacts the Earth and vice versa. So kind of a lot of applicability there. Uh, none of those classes have prerequisites. You can either you can take any of them without having to take anything else. There is a, a lot of overlap uh, with what you learned here in some of those classes, so that could be uh, a good little extra, a little bit of extra knowledge going into some of these classes if you need them. I and if you like geology, check them out. If you need another science, check them out. Well, with that, that brings us to the end, my friends. It's been fun. It's been real. If you ever need me, you just let me know. This is Mr. K signing off. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>